from a place we're not allowed to reveal. It's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. Give me a darn break. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to my Tom Likas Show. That's right, my Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No! I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOP. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. Yes, I said my Tom Likas show. That woman last hour call up trying to tell me what topic to talk about. She was going to tell the caller she was going to issue a challenge and essentially set a topic for the program. I mean, who does she think she is? This is my show. It's my Tom Likas show. This is mine. If you want a show, go get a show. That's what I did. I went out and got a show. Why don't you go out and get a show? Then you can issue challenges. You can do whatever you like. Now I prove my point. You don't let people talk. Yeah, shut up. Wide open telephones on the Tom Likas show. Anything goes, anything at all. You can talk about anything that's on your mind. You just can't change the topic or set a topic. How about that? But if you have something you'd like to talk about, you certainly can. You can talk about anything we discussed on the air this week, anything you think we should have talked about. You can call up, yell, scream, complain, jump up and down. It's all fair game as long as you're absolutely fascinating. If you're not, we kick your ass the hell off the telephone. All you do is call us here at 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Let's rock here. Let's say hello to Lewis on the Tom Likas show. Hello, Lewis. Father, how's it going? Doing okay, son. Good, good, good. Uh, I've been listening to you for three months, and uh, you are the greatest man there is. But uh, today, you you will be disappointed. I I want to go hang out with my ex girlfriend. I want to go. Why? Why? Why'd you do that? I. You know what? To be honest, because I just. I just wanted to see her. I just wanted to hang out with her. And I learned a lot in the last hour when you were on, actually, because we, we went to go eat, and she paid for my food. I didn't pay for her food. She uh, she took me to go eat, and 259 had hit, and I told her I have to leave. I have to go listen to Tom Likas. And she was, yeah, Tom Likas is the greatest. She was saying Tom Likas is a good man. I want to meet that guy. And I was like, all right, let's go. 305 hits the clock, she doesn't want to leave. 310, I say, you know what? You can sit in the restaurant here. I will be in the car listening to Tom Likas. So we walk out, we get in the car, and I drive her home, and we're listening to you. And I stop in front of her house, and she changes the station. And I said, what are you doing? She goes, I don't want to listen to him anymore. And I said, well, this is my car. I, I just bought a car about two weeks ago. I said, this is my car. I will listen to whatever I want. And we had an argument because... She was busting my boss because she said that I did not do anything for her and I did not want to let her listen to what she wanted to listen to. So I kicked her out of my car and I said, all right, go home. Get out of here. I go, there's no chick in this world that's going to stop me from listening to Tom Likas. And I wanted a car to tell you that slowly I'm progressing and learning your ways, but still making the mistakes of, you know, seeing my ex-girlfriend. Yeah, I see that, because uh, in reality, this is what you get. And you see how she expected you to pay for lunch? She she did, actually. She uh, she actually wanted me to go take her, get her nails done, and she wanted me to pay for her food. And I told her, no, you're out of your mind. I go, we're not. We're going to eat food. You're going to pay for it, because you said you were, and I'm going to take you back home. And that was it. <laughs> you're learning the hard way, son. Uh, father, I am, and I'm trying so hard, and... I'm still trying to learn the tricks, but, I mean, I guess I, I really don't know. 
Well, you I know the know. tricks, but every once in a while, you think you know more than the professor. I, I, like I said, I apologize. That was my fault. I shouldn't have done that. I should have listened to my buddy. And, I mean, I just, I, it was just a big mistake that I should have hanged out with her. No doubt about it. No doubt about it, Lewis. Well, thank you for the call. I appreciate it. It's one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. This is Tony on the Tom Likas show, wide open telephones. Hello. Hey, father. First time, father. How you doing, sir? All right. Um, I got a question, Tom. Yeah. I was hearing the radio yesterday about um this girl wanted to bang you. What happened? Uh well, she was supposed to send us a photo. To show us how stunningly beautiful she was, uh, but uh, for whatever reason, that photo never arrived. Well, so you, so you didn't bang her then? I'm not banging somebody sight unseen. I want to see what I'm getting. All right, all right. That's a that's a long drive down to OC to find out you're going to be with Godzilla. <laughs> yep, yep. So she didn't send no pics or nothing. No, she was making excuses to Dean. By the way, she revealed to Dean that uh, she's married. Well, she's married? She's married, and she doesn't want her husband uh, seeing that picture floating around the Internet. Ah, that's what so she that's, said. So that's what she didn't send it. That's what she says. All right, all right. I just wanted to know about that, Tom. Yeah. Our uh, name is Carol, and uh, Carol has one excuse after another. I mean, you know what? It's put up or shut up time, sweetheart. Yeah, yeah. You send me a picture, and if you're the, the the big hot shot you are, I will get in my car, and I will take the five freeway down there, and I will bang the crap out of you. Yeah. <laughs> but I haven't seen a photo yet. <laughs> all right, all right. That's cool. Uh, all right, Tom. Nice probably, a big, probably a big, fugly fatty. <laughs> yep. Because what what hot chick offers sex up that easily? That's why I was I was here and I was laughing, man. I was I was on the floor already laughing about this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was yes. laughing. All right, Tom, um nice talking to you. Um uh, can you take me out um um that guy that killed um the his wife? Fred Freddie Wilhite style, yes I can. I shot my wife in the stomach with thirty eight. Why did you do this? She enticed me, and she ridiculed me throughout my lifetime. I'll see if she's alive. She's alive? Yeah. I think she's dead. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Jack on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing? I'm okay, Jack. I uh, just wanted to call in and comment, uh, especially lately. A lot of people have been wanting to be taken out Kobe style, and uh, Kobe doesn't have a prenuptial agreement, believe it or not. Well, we know that. We've discussed that on the air many, many times. Oh, I didn't. I didn't know that. I, uh, I, I read about it a couple of days ago. I thought that would be interesting to put up on the air. Yeah, we've talked about. We, in fact, we talked about it back when, uh, when Kobe uh, was going through his thing with Kate Faber, the the woman who accused him of raping her. Yeah, I mean, how, how do you do that, man? When you're that high up, that uh, at that magnitude, how do you do that? How do you not get a prenuptial agreement? Well, uh, you know, again, uh, Kobe was young, like a lot of the guys who call this show at the time he got married, and just like so many of the young guys who called in, he probably thinks he knows better than everybody else. But I mean, my question is, when you know, you're you're saying everybody else at that age, but everybody else at that age isn't a superstar in Los Angeles. But that uh, being a superstar in Los Angeles does not convey maturity or wisdom to you. It just means you're a good basketball player. True, but you also have people advising you, which you're right. Not, not, and uh, by the way, you don't necessarily have people advising you. Look at all the rich people who went broke. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Uh, and another thing, Tom, real quick. I mean, didn't you uh, just see, see, by uh, the way, by the way, did you see this week Jose Canseco got foreclosed upon? Oh, I, I heard about that. Well, where are all his advisors? Well, he's been in a lot of trouble for for a long time with the different things. A lot of trouble. The only trouble he's been in is he had some expensive divorces. Yeah. Well, where were his advisors? Yeah, you're right. I guess you're right. And and just uh, because you know how to hit a baseball doesn't mean you're a financial expert. True, true. It also doesn't mean that if you have advisors that you listen to. You're right, you're right. And uh, one other thing, uh, I always see you on Melrose, uh, and I a couple times I tried getting your attention to say hi. It seems like you're always reluctant to to look over to your side. Is there a reason for that? Or 
I, I, you know, I can't be looking around every time I hear a voice. I don't always hear what people are saying. Uh-huh. And how egotistical would that be of me every time I hear the word Tom or I hear somebody talk to think they're talking about me? I, I don't know. I, I, I honked a couple of times. I always, uh, I'm on Melrose. Yeah, yeah, so you were the guy honking on Melrose. Do you know how many people on Melrose honk their horns? No, no, no. no. I mean, just recently. <laughs> well, well, uh, you, do you see me on the way home in my car? Yeah, I see you. I get off on the Melrose. Are my windows just... open? Uh, uh, once they were slightly open and more. Uh, like yeah, they're generally closed because I drive a Lexus. And inside that car, I can't hear anything outside. That's why I bought a Lexus. I see. Well, all right, Tom, uh, thanks for your time. Uh, I'm not trying to be rude. If I saw you, I would acknowledge you. But uh, in my car, you can't uh, hear anything. Thank God. <laughs> all right, Tom, got you. Uh, all right. Can, you up? can I do what now? Blow you up? Can you blow me up? Yes, of course I can. one 800 800 tom That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Ryan. Ryan's listening to the online stream in San Diego on the Tom Likas show. Hello, Ryan. Hey, Tom. How you doing? Happy Friday to you. And the same to you. Hey, um, I want to talk to you about uh, actually a few things. Um, you had Maynard on your wine show, I heard. Yeah, yeah now you're cool. in, the show's not on in San Diego, is it? Uh, you know what? I don't know if your wine show is or not. I just listened to you during the week. Um but I'm a huge uh, Tool fan. Oh, yeah. See if there, is there any way of getting a copy of um, of that, that broadcast? Well, theoretically, the podcast would be at the website of the radio station, 971freefm.com. Okay. I don't know if they've been updating all of the podcasts of the Tasting Room, which is on Sundays from 5 to 7 p.m. Okay. But Oh, and, and wait a minute. Uh, the, the, you won't find it up there, Gary tells me, because the show hasn't aired yet. Oh, so what? No. So what you need? We've taped it. So what you need to do is to listen Sundays from five to seven. If you listen to the stream, uh, the same stream will give you uh, our show, or the Tasting Room, on Sundays. Cool. And um, something else I want to bring up too. You, I, I was listening when you uh, when you were talking about that horse DTB that won. Yeah. I was listening to it, and I'm like, I'm just thinking to myself, I'm like. I've got a client that has horses, and he's made me watch his horse on his TiVo before. And in small world, I'm going, I wonder if that's Maggio's horse. Yeah, so it I'm is. Working, I know. I'm working at it. And I, you know what? I heard five seconds of him when you had him on the phone. I go, oh, my God. That sounds like Carl. And uh, I was at his house two weeks ago. So I do all his audio video work. And I go, Carl, you know, how, uh, how are your horses doing? He goes, oh, well, you know, I only got one left now. But uh, you're listening to Tom Like His Show? <laughs> I'm like, oh, you've got to be kidding me. You've got to be kidding me. You know, and I played it. I said no because I'm in a business environment, and I know a lot of people don't like you, and I love you to death. But, you know, I was like, oh, oh, you know, yeah, yeah, I heard of him. You know, he used to be down here in San Diego. He's like, yeah, well, he called me up the other day, and we were talking about it. He's like, well, apparently DTB means dump that bitch. And I'm like, <laughs> Oh my! I'm like you've got to be kidding me! Like, we're just walking around the house, and he's just going DTV. Now, now, have you seen the photo of DTV on our MySpace page? I have, but you know what? He's not in it. I thought he was in the photo. No, I was looking at it. Um, yeah, he. I don't know who the, any of those people. His wife's not in there. Um, he's not in there. Interesting. Uh, yeah, cr- crazy though. I was like, that is just like the. Craziest thing, like I, you know, I have to listen to you online. You know, I can only do it certain times when I get home, depending on when I get home. And it was just crazy when he brought that up. I was like, "You've got to be kidding me!" Oh yeah, here's the race as it occurred at Santa Anita just a few weeks ago. Up to the gate, goes in. And away oh, they go. DTV broke well from the outside gate along the inside Harlem. Now they're all lining up on the lead, though. A wink at the girls in the pink colors. Now there goes Per for me to kick on. They weren't too keen to get an early leader, but Per for me now going on to do that. And Hus the King is at the back. Four lengths would cover the lot. They run to the 5 8 pole, and it's Per for me down at the rail. And DTB, the two favorites, stride for stride as they move down the back stretch just behind that. Wink at the girls racing in behind them comes Harlem, who's now six off those leaders. And Hus the King, the early trailer. 
Past a half mile they go, and Per for me, comfortably in front by a length, DTB, quite content to just sit there in the second spot. Then it's two lengths back to Wink at the Girls, now coming after them from third. Harlem is still giving them seven length starts and three more to Huss the King. They come past the 5.16s and Per for me continues to lead them. DTB though being confidently ridden and DTB now cutting into that lead. Wink at the girls in the pink colours. Also Harlem running on in the black and even Huss the King running on. Suddenly it's wide open. Homeward bound now and it's DTB who goes on to get the lead. Wink at the girls tackles immediately. Hunk the King coming home gamely down the inside and Harlem at the rail coming for home now and it's DTB up alongside Wink at the Girls, DTB in front as they're under the wire. DTB's one of the neck. Wink at the girls second. Harlem a close third. Tom Light. 1 800 5 800 Tom. 1 800 5 800 866. My boyfriend's dad is listening to your whatever, and he is a cop. Like, he seriously is a piece of cop. And now my boyfriend is starting to listen to you. So I oh, think good. every guy that listens to you is a piece of cop. It's the Tom Likas Show. Open telephone for Tom Likas. Show. Oh. 1-800-5-800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Thank you for tuning in. We continue with your telephone calls. 1-800-5-800-TOM is our telephone number. If you're listening to us anywhere in the world outside of the United States, call this number. Country code 1, area code 323 Telephone number 520-6211. And if you dial now, the international line is open. You will get right in. 1-323-520-6211. Let's continue with your telephone calls. David, on the Tom Likas Show, hello. Hey, Tom, how you doing? I'm doing okay. Okay, um, there's one thing I want to bring up about uh, Mariah Carey and uh, Nick Cannon wedding that just happened. Yeah, we haven't talked about that yet, but that's what we're hearing, yeah. Yeah, I guess it was in the uh, Bahamas uh, at uh, her place uh, over the weekend. So, uh, you know, Sugar Mama right there for Nick Cannon, I guess, right? Well, I'm imagining that Mariah Carey has a few bucks more than Nick Cannon, yes. <laughs> I just want to add that in there, but uh, yeah, so he said, I guess, for, it, for for his deal, I guess. By the way, how many times has Nick Cannon been engaged? Well, that's what it, that's what I'm reading here. The uh, ex fiance, I guess he he, he dumped for her uh, to model uh, E Banks. So uh, yeah, I don't know how many times, but I don't have a number on that. And I read somewhere that uh, there is no prenup. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. But I mean, I guess he doesn't really need one. I guess it's better for him. No, no, she needs one. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Better for him, right? <laughs> well, that it's great for him. Yeah. Yeah. yeah uh, he lucked out. I guess she got uh, a little bit wasted, or I don't know what the deal was. But with- well, we'll see if this is a Britney Spears-type wedding or if this is uh, the oh, real deal. Yeah, yeah. You know, an impulse wedding, they call it. You know what happens impulse. I mean, yeah. So why, why did I do this? That's what usually happens later on down the road. They could be married for the weekend, you know? Yeah, well, I just want to take that. Take me out um, Compton style, please. Compton style. Here you go. Biatch. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Greg on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing? Doing okay. Hey, Tom. There was a call in earlier talking about Kobe and not having the prenup. Well, that's- of course. Well, we can talk about that, of course. Yeah, you know, that's, that's part of the reason why uh, Kobe and his dad don't have a relationship right now. Because actually, Kobe, actually, wait, wait, wait. Uh, that's old news. I, I think Kobe and his dad have a relationship now. They did not. And you're right that that was uh, at least part of the reason, according to the reports. But uh, my understanding is that Kobe and his dad are on good terms now. Oh, really? In fact, Kobe's dad, if you'll recall, was the coach of the uh, L.A. Sparks. Yes, but Kobe and, his, Kobe and his dad went, went into business together, and, and, that, and that fell apart because that was, and that was part of the reason because he, Kobe didn't get a prenup. He didn't talk to Kobe like for two or three years. And right, but, was, that, but that's over. But that's over now. That's what I'm, what I'm trying to tell you is they. Did, my understanding is that Kobe and his dad do have a relationship today. 
Oh, okay. Okay. But I, I just know that that was part of the reason why they fell out, because he wouldn't get a prenup. That's what I heard? Yeah. That was, that was a big thing why his dad was really... Of course, remember, off. all this stuff is gossip, and we really don't know how much of it is true. Well, well, like like you would see his dad at the games all the time and stuff, like they would always pan to the, the crowd. And then, like, the last few years, you haven't seen his dad at all, or his mom. I know, yeah, that, but, I know but, that's for a fact. But we don't know what that means. Oh, okay. We don't know what that means. You got to remember about celebrities, and I, you know I'm at the lowest rung of celebrity here, but I have a pretty good understanding of this. You never really know what's going on with with people in the public eye. You just don't know. I mean, Kobe hasn't said anything about this. Yeah, that's, that's true. Yeah, you got a good point there. But I just thought I, I thought I'd bring that up because I know that you know that was one of the reasons that was why his dad wanted him to have a prenup. Well, that, that's what we had read. Uh, no doubt about that. Uh, thanks a lot for the call. It's Albert on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Tom, how you doing, father? Doing okay, son. Hey, uh, Nick Cannon's ex-old lady uh, had a ring. Now Mariah Carey has that on. <laughs> Heard that on uh, a couple of uh, news uh, TV stations today. You know, we'll see. We'll see. Well, we will see how long this would last. My opinion about Mariah Carey is that she's one of these insane nut job females. Yeah, yeah. I'm giving it one year tops. I'm giving it one month tops. <laughs> All right, Father, can uh, you take me out, Kobe? Here you go, Albert. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. You're a beat to my heart. Oh. Yeah, there I breathe. She's so special to me. Justin on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing? Okay. All right. I like your show. I have a couple questions for you as far as uh, marketing for my business. Uh, I used to shoot weddings, and uh, I, I can't do it anymore, Tom. It just sucks the life out of me. Too much estrogen. So I'm, I'm shooting uh, instant prints, green screen, tell to a computer, printing out 5x7s, 8x10s on the spot. But i got to do twice as many uh, events to cover what I made with, with the weddings. So I'm just, you know, I want to break that 100 uh, event mark to uh, and beyond. I'm just wondering, you know, what kind of venues would be applicable would MySpace, uh, you know, anything like that work or not? Well, first of all, MySpace, uh, are you talking about advertising on MySpace? Or are you talking about having a MySpace page and mentioning your business on it? Um, I, I guess both. Well, they're two very different things. Well, I, I guess I guess mentioning it, because um, I don't know how you would advertise on, on, on MySpace or Facebook or any of those other things. Well, they do have display advertising on MySpace, and they do have... Uh, uh, they do have those Google uh, click-through ads on MySpace. I, I tried Google, but, uh, the, the click ads, but I, I wasn't too successful at that. It just it was a lot of money for not a lot of result. Well, you, you've you got a niche business, and, uh, you know, it's like trying to find a needle in a haystack. True, and, and I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm about half of my, my goal right now, but I'm just looking to get that other half and beyond where I can hire other people and, and, and get, you know, more things going so I can buy some property. So you want to take these photos where? Well, I, I, I take them at uh, corporate parties or, you know, in, in the past I, I shot uh, a big party at Calamigos Ranch for a for a big-name company for another guy, and I branched out on my own. And um, so basically, I, I you know, I wherever you, wherever you want, bar mitzvahs I'll, I'll still do because that's a rite of passage for a man, so I'll, I'll do that. But I'm not doing any more weddings. I, I, well, it might be, uh, you know, if you're talking about corporate business, it might make sense to focus on particular businesses where there, there, there's a lot of your activity going on and find out what conventions and professional organizations they have and attend all their functions with business cards or brochures because that's what people do at those events. Right. And, and do, you, do you think uh, advertising on, on the radio for, for that type of business where you're looking at anywhere from a 1000 to $3,000 ticket item would be uh, worth it? Well, we sell much bigger ticket items than that on the radio. We sell uh, hundred thousand dollar cars. <laughs> well, I get that, and that's why I'm wondering for a smaller ticket item. Would, would well, we also be... sell we also sell uh, five dollar footlongs at Subway. <laughs> but you sell they sell a lot more footlongs than uh, 
something, uh, you know, what I'm looking to sell. You know, well, I, I think you certainly want to target your advertising to the kinds of shows that appeal to the demographic you're trying to reach. Right. I, of course, and I'm not just saying it, I've worked my whole life in the advertising business, and my dad uh, was 43 years with the New York Post, so I'm a second-generation uh, advertising guy. And I believe very strongly in the power of advertising, and I believe very strongly in the power of radio advertising, uh, because I've seen how effective it is. And okay. what you just have to do is work with uh, an account executive uh, at a radio station to try to target the demographic you're trying to reach. Well, I, I have called, uh, I talked to, to one of the girls at the radio station, and I'd, I'd love to be able to afford to, to, to have you, you know, pitch my business. Uh, right now, it's just not in the cars because it's just, just a little bit more than I, I, I can I can muster right now. But um, also, I, I, wanted, I wanted to suggest a uh, a new uh, ending. Ending? Yeah, you know, instead of blow me up, you know, a new kind of ending. Oh, I see. Take me out. How? Yeah. Um, you, you, you seen the, the, the Denzel Washington movie, Man on Fire? Well, there's this one. I'm sure you have, right? No, I, I've heard of it, but I've never seen it. Oh, it, it's a, it's a kick butt movie. It's 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 a classic. But there's this one part. There's this one part in the movie where the guy says, Denzel Washington's character says, "I wish you had more time." And it, out of context, it doesn't mean anything. But if you've seen the movie, it, it, it's it's just crucial to that that scene. Okay. I, <laughs> I guess I'll have to see it. Yeah, I highly recommend it. Well, thank you for that. I, I really appreciate the call. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. Here comes John on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Tom, what's up? How you doing, bud? I'm doing okay. Good, good. been listening for a while. calling a few times. I don't agree with everything you say, but hey, Nick Cannon must be pretty hard up for some dough because, for one, Mariah Carey is old. Two, from what I hear, you know, and hear on, you know, the news and stuff, she's pretty much a trick and been with everyone in the book. So it would be like throwing a hot dog down a hallway. He could, Nick Cannon could be the virgin surgeon if he wanted to be. <laughs> so, you know, I, I, don't, I don't know what he's doing, but, uh, you know, she does have an amazing rack, though. She has an amazing rack. There's no doubt about it. That's, that's her two most outstanding qualities. Uh, but uh, uh, she's fat, in my view. And, uh, yeah, she's, uh, she gives the appearance, in my opinion, of being over 100,000 miles on the odometer. Uh, I, I'd go for it. I, I'd say it turned a few times. Well, uh, I think you're probably right about that. <laughs> you're probably right about that. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Yo, amigo. Come join the party of the year on Cinco de Mayo. Broadcast live from Camacho's in the city of industry. For details, go to blowmeuptom.com. The Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show at 1-800-5800-TOM. Thank you for tuning in. We are three days away from our big wild Cinco de Mayo broadcast is this Monday, May 5th, you moron. Doors open at 2. Show is uh, live between 3 and 7 at Camacho's of the City of Industry. As you may notice, we've cut back on our live appearances because we want every one of them to be special. This is one of the wildest broadcasts we ever do. I think it's the wildest one of the year. And we invite you to come with your game face on this Monday. That means uh, be prepared. The doors open at 2 o'clock. All you uh, yahoos and cattle, you'll all be uh, allowed in after we're done with the sound check. And then uh, it's out of control. Boozing and cruising. Everybody there. This is your opportunity. Do not call me on Tuesday and say, when's your next appearance? Nah, when are you going to be coming back again? Don't do it. Monday is the day. This Monday, May 5th, you got to wait through the weekend, and then the very next show you hear live will be me at Camacho's of the City of Industry this Monday. Camacho's is located at the 60 Freeway Crossroads Parkway exit. It's on the south side of the 60 Freeway. There you are. 
Now, if you need details on how to get there or any details about the broadcast, you can call Camachos at this number, 562-695-5777. If you've ever been thinking about coming to L.A. to see how the show is done, this is the time to do it. 562-695-5777. And we will see you this Monday, May 5th, for our Cinco de Mayo broadcast, Bring Bail Money. 1-800-5800-TOM, that's our telephone number. Alex, on the Tom Likas Show. Hello, Alex. How you doing? Great. Just wanted to ask you, I know you're a very uh, knowledgeable guy, and I figured if anybody knows who Jordan Maxwell is, you might know and have some background information on him. He's claiming you don't have to pay income taxes through some sort of uh, laws that are overlooked, the UCC or anything like that. Right, right. There used to be a guy named Irwin Schiff who said the same thing, and he spent a lot of his adult life at Leavenworth. <laughs> so what, what's the deal with that? What do you what do you think he's trying to do? Does he have any uh, claims? I don't, don't, any I don't know him. I know Irwin Schiff used to sell books and tapes and, I think, uh, seminars and things like that. He used to make a lot of radio appearances, also spent a lot of time in prison. Then when he got out of prison, he was still saying the same thing. So you think it's just a bunch of baloney? My opinion is that the income tax has been proven to be constitutional time and time again. And if you choose to F with the federal government, they'll be happy to show you how legal it is by putting you in prison. Of course. Well, that's what I figured. But I just wanted to know if there's actually anything. Because he was talking about the UCC, the, I believe, the Uniform Commercial Code, or, was, or I don't know what it was called exactly. But he, he was talking about other things like court and how uh, it's, it's out of the legal jurisdiction if you're in court. And there's, I don't know, you don't have to show your driver's license to a police officer and just a bunch of things. that are. That's great. Well, if there. what he's saying is true, here's my challenge to him. Send a letter to the head of the Internal Revenue Service. Include your name, address, social security number, and home telephone number, and tell them you're not paying your taxes or filing a return. Go right ahead and do it. Yeah, that's probably something I wouldn't do, but let's see if he's Well, do hey, if he's, if he's right, then uh, he'll never go to prison. But I challenge him to write the IRS and let them know he's not participating. All right, Tom, and would it be if I asked you another question, something that happened recently with my friend? He was in a club. And, um, he hooked up with this girl that was 22 years old. Well, she claimed she was 22, this Persian girl. And he found out later that she was underage, you know, obviously having sex with her, this and that. And long story short, parents found out, and she's denying that she, she said she was drunk and she got raped. And now he's going to court. They're going to press charges for statutory rape. And I was thinking if, if she told him that she's 22 years old. Doesn't matter. Doesn't, Doesn't matter. matter. Doesn't matter. Wow. So there's no way to protect yourself against something like that, huh? Uh, yeah, make sure you're not, uh, make sure you check ID on everybody. And make sure it isn't I mean, fake ID. Fake, if they have a fake ID, you know, you can't carry a scanner with you when you go to the club. Well, I'll tell you something ID. about fake ID. Ever seen a fake ID? You know, in uh, California, your driver's license has a hologram on it. Mm -hmm. uh, fake ID doesn't have it. I see. And also, if, what do you what do you think if a girl is eighteen eighteen years old or seventeen years old? You know, what's there's not a huge. Obviously, the law says that. The law you know, is the law. I mean, you don't think that you don't think being seventeen years old is old enough to make a decision. It doesn't matter that, what you uh, think. It doesn't. What you think is irrelevant. Well, I, I know that's the law, but what's your take on it? Uh, my take on it is that uh, I obey the law, and I believe people should obey the law. There are countries where uh, the laws are different. For example, Canada just changed the law. They upped the uh, age of consent to 16 from, f I believe it was 14. Mm-hmm. Because I think 16 is a is a reasonable age to show consent. You know, you're old enough to drive and make decisions well, on your own. You're then not you got to go live in a age. country where they have that yeah. age of consent. Well, all right, Tom. Just wanted to get your input on that. Nice I mean, uh, I agree. I agree that it's confusing and arbitrary, and that there are some people yeah. who are mature and some people who aren't. But you got to draw a line somewhere. Otherwise, people yeah. will be having sex with six year olds. Yeah, true. In this country, I wouldn't be surprised. Now, they're already doing it, unfortunately, and uh, so, you know you got to do something. You can't just do nothing. 
But there are countries, I will tell you, uh, with a minimal age of consent and almost no enforcement. Yeah. And, and for years, Hawaii had, what, 14 or 12? I mean, there are states still that have kind of a low age of consent. So everybody oh, yeah. doesn't agree. And but for you, obviously. for you, what you think is irrelevant. Obey the law. Yeah, of course, but my friend's, you know, kind of in a bad situation now. Well, I mean, he, he, well he knew, guess, you know, you know he what? He, he should have looked a little more closely. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Tom. I mean, there's nothing you can do. The fact that he didn't know doesn't mean anything. You're right. I guess now it's up to the courts to decide what's going to happen. And she's the, just the law's the law? Because the parents found out, and now she's denying everything completely. Yeah, well, how do the she parents can't. find out? You know how the parents found out she told people? Yeah, she did. She went around, oh, you know, this guy, this guy, this and that, and the parents find right. out. And, you know, well, that's what happens. There is not a female of any age who can have sex with a man without telling lots of other people. Yeah, unfortunately, that's how girls are. That's how it is. Well, if you know that, then don't count on people keeping your secret for you when you do something illegal. It's not going to happen. Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. He didn't. He did. He thought she was 22 the whole time until all of a sudden he's being summoned to. Court I'm willing to bet office. you he did not even look at her ID. But well, you know, if, if a girl tells you she's 22 and she looks old enough, she's in the 21 and over club. You're not going to ask her for ID. Let you know? me tell you something. I would because I'm a public figure. Well, yeah, obviously. You do you know how many? Do you line. know? Do you how many women over the years I've discovered who said they were 21 or 19 or 25 turned out to be 16? Do you know how many times that's happened? And was it, did you think they were underage or did you have a... I, like a, I check. But a lot of these girls, 16 years old nowadays, I mean, you look at them and you can't... I check anyway. I check anyway. Yeah, I guess there's something you got to do. Kind of like... Let me tell you like, something you know, I did something just, to, just to double check. Uh, I uh, I subscribe to a website called Ancestry.com, uh, and when I find out someone's full name and where they were born, I look up their birth certificate online. And find out all the information? That's right. One girl who looked 16, I checked on her, and it turned out that she was 18 and six months. But I saw her birth certificate. So what ha what happens then if you if you you were with her and you find out six months later she turns eighteen are you still can you still get in trouble if you have yes sex for three months ago yes because you committed a crime hmm. now there are statutes of limitation and but but that they're more than three months there are several years yeah several years have has to pass right right if I were you I'd play it safe. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep a little ID scanner and check girls' IDs, right, put it right next to my bed. <laughs> keep a little black light there so you can look at their driver's license. <laughs> Pull out the red rope. You think I'm kidding. I'm not, I am not kidding. It's a good thing to do, but I mean, you know, some people, when you look at them, they don't even bother to use condoms. I imagine who's going to... Well, you know, and they're the fools, ID. too. They are fools, too. Hang on a exactly. second here, Alex. Uh, Mike, what did you want to say to Alex here? Alex, you know, you say you've got this friend that has this issue, but we know the reality is it's really you that were caught with an underage girl. I mean, come on, bro. Don't you have any game? I mean, you don't need to go for young girls. There's women out there that need it, too. You don't need to be going for 16-year-old girls. Come on, bro. Not really. If it was me, I would say it's me. I have nothing to hide. No, everybody always says it's a friend, but we come on. We know. We know basic psychology. We know it's you that had the issue. But I want to, what I'm saying to you is... Get your balls back and just go for women and not for young girls. If you want to go for young girls, you better go to Asia somewhere where it's just sick and gross to be with young girls. Get it together, bro. Get with women. All right. Thanks for your useless advice. I appreciate it. <laughs> Stay away from the little girls. It's not cool. No, I Anyways. All right, Tom. <laughs> Thank you both. <laughs> Unbelievable. Our email address is my name. It's Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. And I read the email while I work here. Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. Visit our MySpace page, MySpace.com slash T-O-M-L-E-Y-K-I-S. The Tom Likas Show.